I'm Dr. John Saltzman, Associate Editor for GIE, also Director of Endoscopy at the Brigham Women's Hospital, Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. And I'm joined today by Dr. Michael Burke, who is at the University of Sydney, Australia, in Westmead Hospital. And uh, Dr. Burke is going to be speaking to us about his um, article in GIE, Actual Endoscopic Versus Predicted Surgical Mortality for Treatment of Advanced Mucosal Neoplasia of the Colon. Tell us about the background of this uh, paper. Sure, thank you, John. Um, so we know that, that most patients who have uh, large laterally spreading lesions or large sessile polyps of the colon are still being managed surgically uh, around the world. And we use the term advanced mucosal neoplasia to sort of umbrella these patients together. So we use that as an umbrella term. So amongst this group, uh, what we did was we set out to try and understand if mortality is reduced by endoscopic management. It's unlikely that at any future stage there's going to be a randomised trial comparing endoscopic therapy against uh, surgical therapy. Uh, of course, that would be the gold standard. So another way is to do it based on modelling. So we've been uh, conducting this uh, longitudinal observational study for all patients referred to nine academic centres in Australia termed the Australian Colonic Endoscopic Resection Study or ACE study and we've enrolled now nearly 2,000 patients. At a particular point in time, a year or maybe even two years ago now, we censored the group and we, at that point we'd enrolled about 1,100 patients and we looked at their prospectively recorded outcomes in terms of uh, uh, complications and mortality risk, death rate, all of that after EMR and followed them out to 30 days. These patients have uh, uh, scheduled 24 hour, two week and uh, uh, then four month endoscopic follow up and 18 month follow up as well. So they are very well followed this, this cohort. So to determine whether surgery or endoscopic therapy is more effective uh, by using modelling two different scoring systems, one called the POSSUM score, which is a well-validated scoring system for mortality risk uh, after colorectal surgery, and the other called the ACGBI, uh, which is the Association of Coloproctology of Great Britain and Ireland. Uh, we use those two scoring systems to score the whole cohort in terms of their mortality risk at 30 days based on, and these look at physiological <coughs> things, operative risk, um, haemoglobin, urea, all these other modalities, plug them into the model. Um, so when we did that, we found that the predicted mortality for the cohort as a whole was around 3.3% if managed by surgery, and that was the predicted mortality of 30 days, compared to a zero mortality by endoscopic management, an actual zero mortality. So we had no deaths at 30 days by endoscopic treatment. And all of these um, outcomes were statistically very, very highly significant. So did you also model um, morbidity? Are you able to get at that uh, question too? Because we know it's, it's, that's a very crude way of the mortality. Yeah, yeah, uh, not really. But in a previous study, we'd looked at cost in a separate mm -hmm. cohort. Yep. Uh, you perhaps know the paper, yep. um, the SWAN paper from uh, 2000, published in 2010, but this, the cohort was derived from a period of time, 2006 to 2008, before the ACE study started. And what we did there was we had uh, nearly 190 patients referred to us with refractory polyps, large um, refractory polyps, so I think in the US you like to term, use this term defined. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, these patients were all planned for surgery should we have failed. Yep. And we looked at our actual outcomes with all of our uh, morbidity and all of our costs against the best possible surgical outcome. And when we modelled the data that way, we were able to show that by treating these patients endoscopically, we could save uh, 10,800 um, US dollars at the time and uh, seven hospital days per patient treated in that way. Or for the whole cohort, nearly one and a half million dollars. So what are the implications of this research? Should, end, should we be doing endoscopic attempts at removal of all these uh, patients, or how do we pick which ones are appropriate sure. uh, for endoscopy? Sure. So I think uh, if you're confronted with uh, an advanced lesion uh, in the colon, so a lesion that's more than 20 millimetre, um, a large laterally spreading lesion or a large sessile or 1S lesion, we should use the Paris classification, then uh, you need to carefully interrogate the lesion, assess that it's suitable for endoscopic treatment by the usual criteria based on imaging, you know, whether the pit pattern's appropriate and so on. But if you feel that it should be treated endoscopically, then you have to make a decision whether you have the resources to do that within your own department 
or whether you can refer it on to a tertiary centre. The one thing you mustn't do is attempt to resect a lesion that you don't have the confidence to remove completely. Yeah, that's a very important point. And I think if the lesion is larger than three centimetre, then certainly if it's found on a screening, uh, in a screening procedure within a screening list, it's not wise to try and remove it at that time because you don't have sufficient time and you need to be in a relaxed environment with all the resources available to do these type of procedures well. So that's, that's, that's an important point. But having said that, if you can't remove the lesion yourself, you shouldn't send the patient to surgery. Um, I very much believe in this idea of the referral network, the mm -hmm. advanced resection uh, referral network. So um, with each major tertiary centre that specialises in advanced resection, perhaps they should have a group of community hospitals or other hospitals and private gastroenterologists around them with whom they develop relationships and the patients who have more complex uh, uh, lesions are referred in, they're managed and sent back to their referrer for further follow-up. And if you have this good relationship then the patient gets the best outcome, the healthcare service as a whole, uh, all the third party payers save a lot of money, we save a lot of hospital days and we save a lot of mortality. And so the nine centres that participated, these were all expert centres? Yeah, they're all, uh, yeah, I think the term expert is, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're all self-professed experts. Yes. But, but, <laughs> but what, what they were, they're all people, at least one or two individuals at each centre who've undergone advanced uh, mm -hmm. uh, training, dedicated training for one or two years in the, in the, uh, in the techniques of advanced tissue resection in the colon. So these are people who all have a relatively high volume practice with advanced tissue resection, which is what you need, at least one to two cases per week. Great, well thanks for talking uh, with GIE today about your article. Uh, thanks for asking me, John, it's a pleasure.